Hey everyone, Tony here. Uh, if you could please let me know if you can uh, see me okay, hear my voice, see my screen, see my picture, all of that. Um, please let me know. My computer is being less than happy right now. <laughs> Plus, I'm uh, trying this at 1080p instead of 720, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But um, it, I had to reboot. Um, I had to install updates, all of that. So I've been working on getting this all working for the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, so fingers crossed, we will, uh, yeah, wow, I'm really pink looking. <laughs> Fingers crossed we'll go off without a hitch uh, apart from the normal uh, scattered screen and all that kind of stuff, which I have not been able to solve yet. Apparently, I am a unique case. I haven't found any tech issues regarding that or anything, so I'm not quite sure what is causing that. Um, I have my backup recording running, which is good. So, um, yeah. I think we're ready to get going here. So let me uh, let me go full screen and uh, we'll do a formal intro. Hello everyone, welcome to Expert Media Webinars. This is your host and teacher Tony Leidig, and welcome to another Tuesday training. Uh, tonight I thought it'd be really fun to talk about my favorite product creation strategy. This is something that I've been using for years and years, uh, literally from when I first got started, uh, my very first product, and I'm still using it today. Uh, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to reveal some ways that I am using this strategy, and as soon as you see some of them, you'll be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but the question is, and my challenge for you in as we go through this tonight is... Um, to kind of put it out to you, how are you using this strategy or how can you use this strategy or how will you use this strategy? Because I'm telling you, it works. OK, uh, it just really does. And uh, it's it's uh, well, it's built my business over the last 20 years. So um, that's good. 15, 20. What am I talking about? 15 years. So anyway, um, before we get into this, however, I have an announcement. And some of you have heard this announcement already because uh, I posted it on uh, you, or on Facebook and uh, in the Extra Media community yesterday. But Nerd Unscripted is finally returning with a new season and the new name. It will no longer be called Nerd Unscripted. It will be called Unscripted and Magical Podcast. And uh, one of the reasons why I decided to change the name is because Kristen and I have a YouTube channel called Unscripted and Magical Life, which is kind of our behind the scenes uh, videos. Uh, she has a new one that she's going to be posting probably tomorrow. It's pretty much done. I know she was working on making a couple changes today. I don't think she posted it today. Um, but it's also going to be the channel that tracks us as we go into uh, full-time uh, RV life and all of that, whenever that takes place. Uh, and so I decided to, to change the name of the podcast so that it matched that. Uh, one of the things that we've really spent a lot of time talking about was how to focus and fine tune the various business ventures that uh, we have uh, or are developing uh, so that it's cohesive. OK, and so that's why we decided to go with that. It will still be on Tuesdays at noon, just like previous, except I'm going to start off bi-weekly rather than weekly, um, not for lack of content, but uh, if anything, more for lack of time. 
because as you know, we are in the process of moving and downsizing and all of that fun stuff. Our official move date is April 5th. Um, and so we're getting close to that. I mean, we're using a moving company, so we're, you know, we're not having to load a U-Haul or anything like that. That's their job, but, uh, we still have to get everything ready to move. Uh, and, uh, as I shared previously, we have a lot of stuff, um, condensing from 5,000 square feet down to 500 square feet has, uh, been a very interesting challenge. Uh, if anything, Kristen has become a Facebook marketplace guru. <laughs> she sold so much stuff on there. I mean, everything from uh, little iPods and um, kitchen appliances to my car, my Mustang, we sold on Facebook marketplace. So, uh, yeah, does that mean that there will be a Facebook marketplace masterclass trading coming out at some point? I doubt it. <laughs> but she has become a master of all things Facebook marketplace. And so I'm excited uh, to, to dig into this. Uh, our house is under contract, uh, Lauren. Um, the matter of fact, the appraiser was here today. The uh, inspection person is coming tomorrow and um, our closing is currently scheduled, I think for April 22nd. I think is closing. So yeah, we haven't sold the store yet. That's next on our list. Um, but anyway, uh, one of the reasons why I've been kind of dragging my feet on this um, and diving back into it because a lot of the downloads that I've gotten for the last year, because it's it's been on what over over a year since we did um, Nerd Unscripted before. I think I ended it in December, we're in 22, 21, December of 2020, I think. Um, and so over the last 15 months, give or take, um, I've still been getting regular downloads um, every day, um, pretty much literally every day for the last 15 months. And um, a lot of it's been very personal and um, personal growth for me personally, uh, all that kind of stuff. But there's also been some very interesting um, revelations, we'll say, regarding uh, some topics that I think would benefit each of you. And um, uh, with regard to uh, manifestation and all kinds of things like that. And so, um, Anyways, it should be interesting. And just to kind of give you an idea, I mean, we've had some really life-changing, crazy things. Talk about unlocking things and shifting perspectives and all of that. Um, I think it was just yesterday. Um, I was sharing some of the things. Chris and I both were sharing some of the, the recent things and what we did to create these uh things which i can't go into detail on right now um uh but some things that we did with uh with regard to creating the change creating the space uh to allow good things to happen um but we were sharing them with our housekeeper um kareen and uh what was really interesting she was we were just talking to her in the bedroom and she was soaking it all up because she was here to do her weekly cleaning and um, it definitely struck some chords with her. And what was super cool was that um, I gave her some very simple strategies. And this is what I'm going to be sharing on show one. Some very simple strategies that I've been using, that Kristen's been using, that has gotten some insane results very, very quickly. And um, she decided to put it to use. And so... While she was vacuuming the downstairs, she was going through some of the things that I shared with her to do. And um, Kristen had scheduled this woman to come and pick up, I guess it was, uh, we sold our cricket that we have. And so uh, a woman was coming to pick it up. And um, while when she came to pick it up, uh, she happened to come into the house because Kristen wanted to show her some other stuff because, you know, upsell. 
<laughs> and and uh, so the housekeeper uh, was back upstairs, and um, the the lady said, "Don't I know you?" And she's like, "I'm not sure." And she's like, "Aren't you?" So and so, and you used to work here, and she's like, "Yeah, I did." And it's like, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing now?" And she's like, "Well, I'm doing cleaning. I have a cleaning business and that kind of thing." And she's like, "I've been looking for somebody just like you. Would you be interested in doing X, Y, Z? And then maybe we could consider doing this and this and this." And um, so they struck it off, they exchanged information, all that kind of stuff. After the woman left, uh, Corrine just kind of stood there with tears in her eyes and she's like, it works that fast. And I said, yeah. And it just blew her away. Absolutely blew her away. And it, and it was so cool. I mean, Think about all of the stuff that had to take place for that exchange to happen, for her to get new work, right? A new customer, somebody that turns out she knew. We decided to move and downsize. And part of that downsizing was to sell our cricket, which Kristen listed on Marketplace. This woman saw the ad, decided to buy it, came in and through Kristen's upselling abilities, came into the house connected with our housekeeper who she had known from years ago and all of that that just boom 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 fell into place in a matter of minutes because of something that i had shared with her earlier that she applied essentially retroactively and just that quick things changed and we've seen this happen over and over and over again over the last few months and so um Long story to make the point that the first show that we're going to um, to to launch, and I don't think it's going to be this coming Tuesday. It may be next. You um, watch the Facebook group and extra media community for the exact day of when we're going to start this. It may be next Tuesday. We'll see. It's just been so crazy busy. But whenever the new episode, new season, all of that starts, um, it's going to start off with me talking about what I told her and how it works and how it's worked for us. I have some hella insane stories to tell with regard to that. We've been mostly keeping it under wraps, but crazy, absolutely crazy stuff. And the good news is that it works for anybody. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Ganthi. It's gonna I'm gonna be sharing it in Unscripted and Magical Podcast. And I may have Kristen come here and join me um, for this just because that way you can get um, uh, both points of view. Um, I will be doing it on YouTube just like we're doing this tonight. Um, so yes, it will be through uh, YouTube here. But more details to come. All right. Um, so let's get into uh, tonight's funness. That's kind of cool. Um, so more details coming soon. Let's talk about my favorite product strategy. All right. So as you probably figured out, there are many almost limitless types of digital and physical products that you can create. And it would take forever to go through a list of the kind of products that you can create just digital, right? Not even counting like publishing related or photo related. I mean, I'm a photographer among other things. Uh, literally every time I push the button, I'm creating a product if you get right down to it, right? Uh, every photo is a potential product. Um, you know, many of us are involved in generating AI based art. Uh, every generation is a potential product. So on and on it goes. Uh, there are just so many different types of products that we can create. However, there is one strategy that I return to again and again. I use it all the time. I've been using it since I started this business 15 years ago. It's how I started, actually, this business 15 years ago. And the teaching 
that I'm talking about is creating digital and print products that are built around lists of information on a given topic. Okay. List based products. I, it, it probably won't be next Tuesday, uh, Ganty. Uh, and it won't be 2 p.m. It'll be noon, if anything. Uh, all of the details will be shared in the Facebook group and on Expert Media Community. So, And I'll be emailing it as well. So you won't miss out. All right. So uh, the beautiful thing about list-based products is that they're primarily data-driven. And now the data can take on a lot of forms, and we're going to talk about that here in a moment. But the primary benefit for the end user, your potential customer, is that they save time and effort. That's that's it. That's the benefit, is that they save time and effort. But time is money, right? Um, effort is money. And so by you investing the time doing what other people maybe are unwilling to do or don't know how to do, and then sharing that effort and the results with others, you're saving others time and effort and money, but uh, you're also being rewarded for the time that you put in. Okay. Cause there is a time investment on your part. Uh, but this, this strategy or process or whatever you want to call it lends itself well to books, to courses, to support products, um, on and on and on. And I have done all of the various versions of it. Yeah, absolutely. Amy, going back to the public domain code book model. Yeah, I'm still using it today. And whenever you, uh, see how I'm using it today, you'll go, Oh, Okay, I get it now. <laughs> you just wait. So uh, the other cool thing about this is that it works in nearly any niche. So it doesn't matter what your interests are. You know, like things that I'm creating related to Magical Bear, I'm using this exact same process, right? Um, I'll let you in another little hint. Uh, if you think about it, like, let's talk, you know, one of my interests, and I'm getting ready to start creating a, a, an Oracle deck. And you're going to hear a lot more about that in the next week. Um, but I'm getting ready to create an Oracle deck, right, um, called Spirit Animals. What is an Oracle deck exactly? It's a list. It's a list product. You got 36 cards, 44 cards, 54 cards, however many cards. Or if it's a tarot deck, you got 78 cards. Each one is different. Each one goes uh, or is related to, like in my case, different animals. 36 different animals. It's literally a list product. It's a deck of cards, sure. You know, Oracle cards, but it's a list product. So uh, list data exists in most areas of expertise. It can be used to create website lists, idea lists, keyword lists, collection lists, instruction lists, checklists, trend lists, resource lists. It goes on and on. One of the first products, not the first product, but one of the first products that I created was Magazine Master List. All that the product was literally uh, was a list of 6,750 magazine listings of magazines that are in the public domain. That's it. Another product that just recently came out that I used as a support product, uh, using artists to guide your AI illustrations, where I took, what, 150, I think, different artists and rendered them using AI to see how they would interpret trees based on specific artists names. And of course, every result was different. And so I had the picture, the end result render and the artist's name. But if you uh, boil it down, it's a list product. I listed 150 artists and 150 illustrations 
Anybody can do that. I probably shouldn't tell you guys this since you all are my customers, <laughs> you know, but still, um, it's true nonetheless. And honestly, I discovered this by accident. Um, uh, many of you have heard the story. Uh, it began with research back in 2006. I was listening to a podcast interview um, of Joe Vitale and uh, he was talking about a lot of different things, but he got on the topic of public domain, which I had done some things with, uh, with public domain uh, back when I managed a printing company in New Jersey. And um, whenever he brought it up, I thought, that sounds really cool. And he was talking about um, being able to go to a certain website and find a, a classic book that was now in the public domain that was a, essentially a metaphysical book, a new thought type book, and how he had republished it and all of that. And um, it got me curious. Like he shared a couple websites like Gutenberg.org and some of those, and I'm writing them down as quickly as I could. And uh, then as he was talking on this podcast, or interview or whatever it was, I'm on the internet doing research and I'm finding some of these sites and I'm like, I wonder why Joe isn't talking about this one and wonder why Joe isn't talking about that one. Well, later I found out from Joe that they were like some of his sweet spot websites that he just didn't want to share publicly. And, uh, and so I started searching for websites that offered public domain content and there were a lot less of them back then. Um, in 2006, but after a couple months, I compiled a list of over 230 websites related to the public domain. And so I started uh, organizing the data in a category. So like um, websites related to books, images, magazines, and so on. There were, I forget how many categories I ended up with, um, six or eight. But uh, anyway, uh, I used that list as a giveaway for my first event. My very first anything into inter internet marketing was a live event. <laughs> I mean, talk about jumping into the fire with both feet. Um, so it was an all day event and, um, hosted it, fed everybody. I mean, the whole nine yards. And, uh, I'd never taught on this topic before public domain, or I never talked on any marketing topic before. Um, I mean, I, you know, I hosted it in the uh, church where we were co-pastors of. Um, and so, you know, I had to build an audience, the congregation, right? And so some of them who came to this event were part of the congregation. It's kind of funny thinking back on it now. Uh, but anyways, part of the materials that, that they received during the course of the day, which I did videotape and everything, um, was these 230 plus websites that I had put together uh, on this uh, printout that was stapled together. Not very sexy. Um, and so that ultimately became my public domain code book. And so uh, this is actually a picture of that handout. I have two copies of this, I think, still. Um, of course, I have the original source files, but uh, this is what it looked like. And um, <laughs> that's me speaking. Um, I'd love to say that the, uh, the video image is stretched horizontally, but I'm pretty sure that uh, I was just fat. <laughs> I've lost a lot of weight since then, but, uh, and hair, I've lost hair too. Uh, but anyway, it was a fun time. It, it was very, I don't want to say challenging, but it was definitely, you know, dog in a new pan kind of thing for me because at that point I had no practical experience. I was teaching without experience. And um, except for what I had done at the print shop, you know, where I was selling public domain maps and all that kind of stuff, um, old menus and those kinds of things, all repros. 
And so then that data, I ultimately turned into the public domain code book, which is my first physical product. And it took me 11 months, I think, um, from beginning to end, because remember in this time period, I'm a book designer. Like that's what I was doing full time. I had my own business um, working as a book designer for 13 different publishing companies. And so I took all of that knowledge and put it into creating my own book, but it just took me forever because I was bouncing back and forth uh, between, you know, paid projects that I was working on and this thing. And um, what what's interesting is that I didn't realize that at the time, but I was on to something big. And um, I remember the night before the event, my uh, previous wife, Deborah, uh, had a dream and she woke up um, early in the morning and uh, she's like, I had a dream about your event today. And I said, OK, what's that? And she said, in the dream, I was told that uh, you have a million dollar idea. And I said, well, that's cool. What, what is it? And she said, I don't remember. <laughs> like, great. Well, I'll tell you what the million dollar idea was 15 years out, 16 years out. Million dollar idea was list products. I thought it was the public domain, which that has been a million dollar idea for me as well. But List-based products and the public domain combined, I mean, several million dollars I've made um, over the course of the years with those kinds of products. So I've created a lot of list products since then, and some of them you probably didn't actually think about as list products, but yet they are. Um, AI Art Kickstart, remember that? Uh, it just came out fairly recent, uh, several months ago. 162 page PDF guide and video training. Uh, what does it include? A list of 450 artists and how their name influences AI output for creating, in this case, landscapes. And I, I mean, I still use this myself. I had it open yesterday and going through and testing some artists for a new project. So hybrid illustration styles, there are eight of them, eight courses, hybrid illustration styles. What are they? Lists of software that allow you to manipulate existing images. And then, of course, I demo how to use the software and everything. But at the heart of it, they're all lists. Income reboot. Uh, Quick Cash taught that not too long ago. This is number three in that series. It's literally a list of the best ways that you can reboot your income. Uh, Merch Masters, right? 24 PDFs in the full bundle. Literally checklist of how to do just about anything marketing-wise and product creation-wise. Public Domain Resource Database. Um, Harry just mentioned that. Uh, there's so much information in here, but at the end of the day, what is it? It's a list. Um, public domain fantasy hacks. So this is just a representation. There are 24 courses in the hack series, public domain hack series. Every single one of them is a list based product. Uh, remember this book, uh, that was related to public domain data hacks list of stock characters and all of that uh, prompts to guide your character development for creating custom characters for your books. Uh, the AI resource guide, a collection of 60 different AI based art generators and tools for creating all types of amazing art. It's a list product profit from your camera, self-explanatory fantasy landscapes, um, 450 artists. Actually, this one is different from the AI Kickstart.
or no, that is the same. That's just the actual product itself. Um, this was just put out in the um, NFT launch blueprint as a bonus. Uh, 24 NFT marketplaces for launching your next NFT collection. It's a list of NFT sites. So see, it can be now these are mostly just marketing related, but I'm working on several related to crystals, um, the, the Oracle cards, um, all kinds of things, uh, herbs. You would not believe the lists that I have sitting in Evernote for a really wide variety of products that can be created as downloadable PDFs, can be created as checklists, can be created as an entire video series or all the above. Okay. Really powerful. Um, and so, uh, eBooks, wait, did I just say this again? Let me, I want to teach the same thing twice. No. Ebooks, books, uh, presentation based courses all lend themselves to list products. Um, you just want to present the information in an easy to in easy to reference ways. Um, you can include places for notes, which is what I did in the um, code book um, and, and in a few of my other products. Um, but uh, you don't want to create a give it all away type of product because it would likely be too much. That's why there are 24 hacks courses. That's why there are eight different hybrid illustration styles courses. Okay. There's actually a lot of wisdom in there. First, you have information overload, um, which is why I only teach maybe two or three hacks courses per year. But then there's also the prospect of creating a repertoire of products that allow you to reach a wide variety of audiences. So um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, but keep in mind that this data can be recycled and reinvented in many different forms. And I practice this all the time. You may not realize it, but I practice it all the time. Um, it's basically a hybrid product creation approach. And um, nearly every product that I create uses a very specific methodology, um, part of which I'm going to reveal in the next slide. But think of it this way. Let's say that, um, well, actually, I'll just let the next slide explain it. So um, the beautiful thing about these list-based products is your ability to leverage them for multiple products. Okay, so let's say you put together a list. It could be on anything. Pick a few of the items on that list and go deeper with it. Uh, it's a huge product creation secret. Here's how I use it. This is my typical process. Reveal the resources. So this is the list itself, whatever that list might be. Public domain websites, you know, the top 20 crystals for beginners. Um, it could be whatever, you know, the five best AI art websites. So reveal the resources, whatever they are. Share what you can do with those resources. So it's not enough to just present the list. Yes, you could get away with that as a lesser product, but then if, as you share what you can do with those resources, either share them in writing, demonstrate them in video form, whatever the case may be, right? Show results. And then here's how to use those resources step-by-step, step, which kind of just takes the second process um, one step further. This formula here, which is what it is, it's a formula. Reveal the resources, share what you can do with those resources, and then how to use them. There's a difference between what you can do and how to do, right? There's a lot of people out there that teach what to do, but not how to do. So reveal the resources, share what, to, what you can do, and then how to do it that three-step process defines nearly every course I've ever created. Literally. Like that, this slide right here on the screen is money in the bank. 
yes, there's other parts to it. The moving pieces, you know, building an email list and building a website and marketing and all that kind of stuff. Sure. All of that's out there, but <clears throat> excuse me, from a product creation perspective, this is a multi-million dollar secret. So a really good example, one of the merch masters, uh, sheets on making art cards. Um, it really breaks it all down the different kind like this is just one page of it um i forget how many pages there are related to art cards but types of art cards ways to use art cards this is literally a course which i've taught i could build a course around how to use my art cards Actually, I kind of have done that, but you know what I'm saying? So this one literal small list that you see here on the screen right now could be turned into several products. And to me, that's exciting because anybody can create a list. You can find out e uh, information on anything, even if you're clueless about a given topic like i know a lot about a lot of things because i'm a forever student you know i'm constantly reading constantly learning uh reading both online and offline i buy several books per month every month and um i follow a lot of groups i follow people on facebook instagram whatever i'm paying attention to what they're doing and how they're doing it and uh, I'm building my lists and I'm checking it twice because I want to find out who's naughty or nice. But in reality, um, if you're not sure where to begin, but you want to create a product or you want to create a course or something, this is where to start. Just with a list. What are you interested in? You know, it doesn't have to be marketing related. It doesn't have to be photography or public domain related. It doesn't have to be AI related or anything. It could be in literally any topic. Exercise routines, vegan recipes, how to, how to um, create raised bed gardens. You need a list of things to actually build a raised bed garden from, don't you? Right? So it goes on and on. Just, I really want to encourage you to let this uh, cook in your brain because I, and I've talked about this, Ganty asked earlier um, about this product blueprint and um, uh, what I decided to do is make that available again at the original price. Um, if you want to dig deeper into this, it's 47 bucks. I mean, if you don't already have it, probably one of the best classes I've ever taught just because of the gold that's in it. Um, if you don't buy it, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a place where, um, I don't have to push, push, push all the time to accomplish what I need to accomplish financially or otherwise, just because my view of source is different. But I really want you to think about how you can take what I've shared tonight and apply it to your own interests, your own dreams, whatever. As I said, there are other moving pieces and that's absolutely the case. I cover those in the course in um, List Product Blueprint, which I just taught last fall, I believe. Um, but think about how with your favorite topic right now, how could you create a list related to that. Thomas said, I didn't realize that the product I'm creating is really a list product. Most of them are actually. 
I, because if you think about it, you know, I'm very methodic how I teach. That's just kind of my style. Um, but what is methodic teaching? You're teaching method, right? Method is step by step. What is step by step? It's a list of what to do and how to do it. That's all that it is. And so, you know, I just was blessed to connect those dots and figure it out that, holy cow, um, this can be applied in so many different ways. And uh, to me, it's very exciting because I'll never lack in product ideas ever. Yeah, it's a recipe, Amy said. Exactly. Um, Harry says, I have a cascade of creative ideas percolating and that's great. Get them written down and then pick one and get on it. Like one thing, it's one thing to have lists of lists and I have lots of those. It's another thing to take action on them. You know, you can have creative ideas all day long that could make you millions of dollars, literally. But if you never execute, like that's the next part, that's the beautiful thing about a list is that you have to execute, you have to take the next step, you have to leap off the cliff or however you want to call it. Um, it took me a while to figure it out initially. And I recognized just honestly, it didn't occur to me what I had at the time, but uh, whenever I started, I'll, I'll never forget, I've told this story before. Um, but uh, the first marketing event that I ever went to, um, I went with a, a good friend of mine and he already knew a lot of the big players and I knew none of them. And uh, David Hancock was his name, is his name, uh, Morgan James Publishing. And I remember one of the people that David introduced me to uh, back then, and again, this is like 2006, uh, was Joel Kahn. And uh, so David introduced me to Joel Kahn, and I had a copy of the code book with me. And um, let me copy this link here. I'm going to give you a slightly different link than what's on the screen. It'll get you to the same spot. But anyway, so uh, David introduced me to Joel Com, and uh, Joel was looking through my book and commented on how nice it looked and how useful and all that kind of stuff. And he said, how long did it take you to create this? And uh, I said, 11 months. And he, I will never forget, he handed it back to me and he looked at me and he's like, dude, if it takes you 11 months to create your products, you're not going to get anywhere. You need to figure this out, like figure it out faster. And um, at first I thought he was an arrogant asshole, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> we became friends later, but, um, and he, uh, Liz said that he's freaking smart and he is freaking smart. I, I really admire what he's uh, created over the years and how he's, adapted and changed and all of that. And we've had the chance to share the stage now multiple times and he's just a good guy. Um, but I didn't know any better back then, you know, and, but what I discovered was that he was right. And, um, so the month after meeting Joel and having my first product in hand, public domain code book, I created four products. And guess what? Most of them were list based. And, uh, and I, I've kind of slowed down in product creation now. Back then, I didn't know any better. You know, I'm just like trying to make it, quote unquote. Um, uh, and now, you know, I'm averaging what, 20, 24 to 26 courses a year, uh, which is still pretty aggressive compared to what a lot of people create, but I, I just love it. So, um, but it, it's just interesting to me and in looking back that where I went back to was what I knew, which was very little. 
other than, I mean, yeah, I worked as a pro photographer and worked as a book designer and all of that, but, um, but I didn't know shit about marketing and information products, nothing. And so, uh, to go back to the one thing that I figured out was how to make a list of things, uh, man, it just changed everything. You know, one of the products was, uh, like uh, top 35 ways of selling products on eBay or something like that. Um, that was one of them, I think. I forget the name of them all now. It's a long time ago. <laughs> They're not available and probably seriously outdated. Uh, and that is one of the things that you have to pay attention to, actually, especially if you're going with websites and stuff. I would say with the code book, given its age, um, probably a solid 25% of the links are no longer functional. Um, so there was that, uh, one other thing that I'll share with you just because it popped into my mind related to this is, um, so whenever I got the code book, the very first thought that I had in creating it was to create a physical book book designer right um and so that's what i did i designed the whole thing in quirk express just like i would any other book so i used what skills that i had and i designed the book later on i decided to create a digital version of it so that people could either uh, buy the physical book or the digital version and um, i discovered something very interesting in that process and that was that the uh, digital version of the book outsold the physical version of the book by a factor of three or four, I think, even when the digital version was more expensive. And I thought that that was very telling. It, it was also, um, I, was also wanting to build a list and those kinds of things. So I created a pay attention here subset of the book to use as a giveaway. And I used that as a way of building my list so that people could download the book. And then after they got their download and, and confirmed their email, then they were taken to the sales page where they could buy the full product. And I ran ads to that, um, uh, Google AdWords, right? Back then, I spent a lot of money on Google AdWords. But the good news is that I was making more money than I was spending. And uh, back then, it wasn't like today. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you spend, you have a five hundred dollar a month ad spend. That was a big freaking deal back then. That was like hide it from your wife kind of spend, you know, now it's different, of course, but, um, but, but back then it was a big deal. And uh, so just to reiterate, in case you missed it, take your list based product and create a subset that you can use as a giveaway to build your list. Okay. I still, I still do it all the time. Not so much for list building, um, but I do it all the time. I use it more as a promo tool, you know, all those fun PDFs that I send out to you guys. It's just to promote the course. Y'all are already on my list. So, you know, um, but I am getting ready to start going into list building again, except in this case for magical bear, but guess what strategy I'm going to use <laughs> the exact same one. Uh, and guess what type of product I'm going to be promoting the same kind of product. So, yeah. <laughs> Mark says, OMG, I have file boxes of ideas yet. I write down the new ones every day. Uh, the cream of them always rise to the top and never make it, uh, into a file. Yeah, I have some lists that I've been sitting on for a couple of years. I have a couple of courses that I have completely written with graphics, 
slides and everything that you've not even heard about. Um, just because to me, it's more about um, timing and feeling, if that makes any sense, not to sound weird, but yeah. Um, like I'll create something at the time, I think it's a good idea. And then the more I sit with it, the more it's like, nah, I don't think the timing is right on this. And, and honestly, there's some courses that I really want to create um, that are list based. Uh, there's one that I've completely outlined. I just worked on it last week that I probably will not teach because um, I, I don't know that it would sell well to my audience uh, based on some uh, previous experience. Uh, and I really, really want to teach it. And I may just teach it anyway. Um, it's just one of the things that you do have to pay attention to when you're creating any kind of product and certainly list-based products is uh, you have to count the cost. You know, um, it takes time to research stuff, to build those lists. In some cases, hundreds of hours. Like the uh, the PDF that I put out, um, AI Kickstarter, whatever it was called, they had the 450 landscapes from all the different artists. How much time do you think I actually had into the research of that and then the rendering of all of those illustrations? How much time do you think it took me? A couple hundred hours, literally a couple hundred hours, uh, all for the sake of a PDF. So I had to make it worth my while to, you know, like you have to really believe that something is going to click, that it's going to work, especially when it's carrying a $27 price point. You know, you have to sell a lot of $27 products to make it worth your while. And I did. And I mean, it's honestly, there's no other resource like it on the planet right now. And it's fucking awesome to be honest. <laughs> it's awesome. And so uh, I've often said that one of the key secrets to success is to be willing to do what other people are unwilling to do, because you will gain the rewards that they will not. But you still have to be smart about it. You know, so like, probably not a good idea to build a list product around, you know, the, uh, popular places around the country where you could get cremated. I mean, I don't know that that would uh, <laughs> do very well. But who knows? I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Yes, please uh, smash the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to be notified of whenever I'm teaching new things, there's a bell down there that you can click on. And if you're not a subscriber of my channel yet, I would appreciate it very much if you would subscribe. Uh, I am planning to amp up a lot of what I'm posting on this particular site. I'm still doing the Tuesday classes and everything, but just keep in mind that just single trainings alone, I've taught over 400 of them, not counting the couple hundred courses. And so one of the things that I'm planning to do after we're done with our move and everything is to go back through some of those trainings and pull out the gold, just, you know, subset of a training and post it here on the channel just to provide more value. <laughs> Lauren says it's a dying art cremations. That's yeah. Kristen would roll her eyes at my dad jokes if I said something like that. <laughs> Thomas says, but you could do a list of places to have your ashes scattered. Yeah, actually, that could be kind of cool. For sure. I probably won't, but. <laughs> uh, Amy says, teach it anyway. I bet it'll do better than you think if you really believe in it. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I know a lot of you guys semi well, most of you I've never met. 
Um, but yet, you know, we've interacted for years. Some of you have been following me for 10 years or more. And, you know, I'm so grateful about that. It's one of the reasons why I'm excited to, to get out into the country and uh, have meetups and stuff to get to hang out with all of you. But, uh, but anyway, through interaction, like I have the data, right? Of, and I track it on a very, very regular basis of um, like there's certain courses and course topics that I've done this long enough that I can tell you almost exactly how much, how many sales there will be. Okay. Um, uh, on a given topic. And I'm right 98% of the time. There's always that surprise that you don't understand why, but it just resonates. And some of that has to do with sales copy, but most of it just has to do with timing. And so I know with this particular topic, which I have taught them before, it's very, very niche. And because of that, there's a lot of folks that just aren't going to be interested in it. And, you know, 60 of you are going to get it for free because you bought the whole year's worth of courses. So there's that. But at the end of the day, you don't know. And I've been working on it. I probably will teach it at some point just because I've been uh, working on it. Suzanne asks, how is Kristen feeling? Not so great at the moment. Um, she uh, got some tomato basil soup that was oat milk based, um, which in and of itself is good, gluten free and everything. But she missed the ingredient. One of the ingredients was uh, crushed cashews. And she is very, very allergic to cashews. Like those could take her out. And so as she was eating it, she noticed that her throat started to swell and then she grabbed the box and she saw the ingredients and then, um, you know, make a mad dash for Benadryl and Coca-Cola and, you know, those kinds of things. And so because of that, she's not been feeling well, but otherwise she's been doing good. Uh, Amy says, I sold paintings that I didn't think would sell, but I printed them anyway because I love them. And then it sold. Uh, surprised the heck out of me. And I learned something from that. Yeah, I've certainly had the same kind of experiences as well. Uh, Thomas says, uh, do you have a comment on the new postal increases? Uh, the poster business will be dead. Um, honestly, I haven't seen them. Or let me rephrase that. There's new postal increases. <laughs> uh, let me give you my point of view on stuff like that. If people want something, they will do whatever necessary to get it. Okay. Um, and so think about it this way. There are posters. We'll just use your example because I know you're involved with some of that. Um, there are posters of works of art that, you know, so all day long because people love them or whatever. You have the originals. Uh, you see like an original work of art and you stand there and scratch your head. Like, how is this art? You know? Um, but yet people will throw millions of dollars at it. Uh, and then you have other posters that are gorgeous photographs, paintings, whatever, and people won't spend 10 bucks on them. What the hell's going on? Right? Like, why would that be the case? Uh, and so that's why, for me, if I feel inspired to do something, I could care less what the post or what the postal prices are. Like if I if I wanted to move full time into a poster business, 
that would be my last concern, quite frankly, because if people want something, they will move heaven and earth to get it. Yes, it's a luxury item in most cases, but still, um, I don't really care what the postal rates are going to be. People will pay them. Um, do I think it's ridiculous that post, you know, the postal rates are going to increase? I don't know. We live in a weird ass time right now where everything is increasing because of stupid decisions. Um, but I don't bank my life on what's, you know, oh my God, you know, diesel fuel is over $5, 555 here per gallon right now. And I'm getting ready to go out and buy a dually to pull a 42 foot or 43 foot fifth wheel that I'll probably get five miles per gallon at 555 a gallon. Should that, hell, that should kill my dream of wanting to go full-time RV, but I could care less what it is um, because that isn't my focus. My focus is on success. So, um, but just to address your poster thing, I mean, hell, what's stopping you from getting a bunch of them printed out and do the art circuit, you know, go to art festivals. I mean, that's one solution. Go uh, point of sale face to face, um, you know, uh, put together nice collections and start selling them on fair in bulk to retailers. Like there's so many different ways of skinning the cat, so to speak. One of the cats is outside my door, so I better be careful how loud I say that. But <laughs> sometimes I want to. Um, but, you know, the better question is, how can I best serve my community to continue selling posters so that this postal increase doesn't affect me? You know, it's just my point of view. Ellen said, I saw her post. Oh, I didn't realize that she had even posted. So <laughs> I don't know. She has an EpiPen Ganty, but um, in most cases, Benadryl and, you know, a glass of Coca-Cola. Well, pretty much take care of it. <laughs> Your taco cat, she must have overheard me. I'm just scanning down, uh, scanning down through your comments. Yeah, allergies are a scary thing. Um, I fortunately don't have allergies like that that can be life threatening. But when she and I first got together, we were at a local Indian restaurant and um, there were cashews and something she ordered. And uh, it got pretty hectic. Um, for a moment, she's very careful with ingredient lists, uh, as am I for the obvious reasons, but, uh, somehow she just missed this one. It was a new soup that she des decided to try tasted good, but she's eating it. And I was like right there when it started to happen, I wasn't having soup as well, but I just happened to walk out into where she was having it. And all of a sudden I see her like grabbing a hold of the box quick. And I thought, uh Oh, and, uh, yeah, she got really sick. And right before I went live, actually, she was in the downstairs bathroom, um, you know, giving back some of that soup, not to sound gross, um, but the bathroom is literally right under my office. And so I ran down and make sure she didn't need anything and all of that. But Uh, Margaret asks, what was the name of Kristen's YouTube channel? 
It's called, well, it's for both of us, but it's called Unscripted and Magical Life. And you can go there and subscribe. Thomas says, I'm allergic to Indian restaurants. I love Indian restaurants. Indian, Thai, Egyptian, you name it. I like them all. Mediterranean. All right. Um, any other comments or questions? Oh, wow, Amy. I'm not a big fan of garlic, so that wouldn't bother me. <laughs> or onions, but corn? Oh, that would be a tough one. I actually have a very mild corn allergy, but it doesn't affect me like that. Uh, Debbie says, uh, put a link to her channel on the chat. Um, Amy, the topic that I was talking about earlier is genealogy related. Um, it's related to uh, um, ancient DNA research. So, you know, finding finding relatives and ancestors back 5,000 years ago or so. Um, let's see, Kristen's channel, well, our channel. I don't, I'll, I'll go search for it, just like. Um, hey, I'm subscribed. I know you would like it, Mary. I mean, that's a foredrawn conclusion <laughs> because that's that's your passion. But um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a list of a couple hundred people who love genealogy like that. She is very persistent. She feels like she's missing out. Yeah, she is cute though. Uh, Vicky says, I'm creating a course on ancestral and generational healing. Oh, that's cool. Very worthwhile. Any other questions or comments, please, before we wrap this one up? I appreciate you all being here. It's a lot more fun than me just talking to myself, <laughs> which actually never really happens, but still. Awesome. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I will be sharing more information with regard to um, Unscripted and Magical podcast. And um, that'll be coming in the next several days. It will probably start not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Not quite sure yet. I, we are... Um, uh, still really dancing around the whole thing of packing and moving and all of that. Uh, Thomas says, is this product blueprint still fairly current? Um, it's less than six months old. I just taught it last fall. So I would say yes. It's a timeless idea. <laughs> Suzanne says, I spend a lot of time on ancestry. Yeah, I do too. Uh, ancestry, my heritage, 23andMe, um, my true ancestry, genome link, um, on and on it goes. 
I am related to a lot of Vikings, though, which is kind of cool. Uh, you are welcome. Thank you for uh, showing up tonight. Of course, we'll be back next Tuesday at 6 p.m. And um, I'll probably have more definitive information regarding the new podcast then. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoy your week. Uh, probably not, Amy, as far as promoting on Ancestry. I don't know that they promote like affiliate type products and stuff. I mean, I could go build a list around that topic. I just don't have time to, honestly. Thomas says, almost the only factual thing I ever learned on Fox is that fear sells and sells well. Well, that seems to be the rule of thumb pretty much everywhere. Um, but you know what else sells? Results. You solve a problem for somebody. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, same Debbie, same for me. Distant cousins and all that. It's it's fun. It's cool. All right, folks. Well, it seems like Taco Cat is dying, so not really, but she thinks she is because she can hear my voice, but she can't reach me. So I'm going to go comfort her. <laughs> But um, I hope you all have a great uh, rest of your week. And uh, if we don't chat before, I will see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. So good night, everyone.